Dude, I've made this video like fucking ten times. My camera keeps. <sighs> anyway, time to keep my channel active, fragrance wise. I'm about to fucking fall asleep. I've made this video so many fucking times. Um, I'm gonna do Dolce and Gabbana, the one Royal Knight. Um, I don't think I could do a review on that without actually saying that the Dolce and Gabbana, the one is actually, of course, one of my favorite fragrances of all time. It's the fragrance that really. Was probably the very first fragrance. Of course, I've smelled other things before, but it was the very probably first fragrance that I smelled that I was like, "Wow, I want to smell like this." Like, I think this smells awesome. Like, this is this is totally this is totally me, dude. Like, I could totally wear this, right, and enjoy it, right. So, and of course, if people care about compliments, um, yes, it is one of my most complimented fragrances of all time. I've had all those cliche girls, you know, coming up to you, licking you. You know, girls doing spilling their spaghetti, doing all sorts of crazy shit. And although for how popular it is, of course it is a very popular fragrance to the point that even when I'm not wearing it, I have had girls be like, "Oh, are you wearing Dolce & Gabbana the one?" That's my favorite fragrance. Of course, it is a very popular fragrance. But anyway, late to the party by quite a few years, but I finally got around to smelling Dolce & Gabbana the one Royal Night. Now, reading some reviews, apparently this has been reformulated which uh, I'm not sure which version I've smelled, but that doesn't surprise me because even the EDT has multiple versions of it um, ingredient-wise if you look at it, and I'm always wondering what is, I have like a backup bottle of the EDT, I have the EDP as well, but I'm always wondering what is my backup bottle going to smell like because who the fuck knows. I know um, when I was uh, traveling to Japan, though, I can tell you, uh, I don't know what uh, version of EDT they were selling at the, duty free but I was like you know let me just put this on while I'm traveling to Japan and I can tell you 12 hours later I sprayed it out of my hand I could still smell it so I don't know what the current version of the EDT is but it's still you know it's, it's not like blasting out but longevity wise it's always always generally been pretty good on me so anyway for the Royal, one Royal Knight though um I think one of the things when you look at it, the Royal Knight has like Arabic letters or something like that, right? So I think, oh, I guess as me as an American, when you stereotype something like that, like, oh, is this like a, you know, Middle Eastern? Is this like potentially out there smelling, you know, kind of skanky or, you know, some kind of like very spicy and herbal, you know, just kind of out there in some way or, you know what I mean? But uh, I can tell you my experience is um, a lot generally like what other people have said. It's basically, it's uh, trying to emulate or recreate the one with different ingredients because it really does smell very similar to the one once it dries down. Uh, I'm sure it would be very hard, I'm sure, for me to, I'm sure if you put the EDT, the EDP, and the one royal knight spray three pieces of paper and let me smell the dry down. I'm sure I would have a very hard time if I could distinguish the smells at all um, for you. Um, I can tell you, looking at it too, um, I will say that what I haven't seen other people say though, in my opinion, is not only was it, it was not offensive, I didn't even potentially find it uh, the beginning. I didn't find it to be super spicy or herbal or like open like come like like a kitchen cabinet or anything like that. It was not out there whatsoever. And I know some people think that they smell oud. I don't smell any kind of oud in there now. There's no kind of skankiness in this whatsoever. But what I did get out of this that I haven't seen other people mention is my nose did not associate this with a very spicy opening. My nose associated this with a very fizzy opening like my nose was like assaulted by fizz and like carbonation like right that's what my nose associated the smell with it wasn't like an herbal you know spicy kind of thing it was a fizzy fizzy sparkling kind of thing it actually reminded me if i had to make it sound interesting i would say say you go to a fucking uh a vending machine or again I don't really drink pop um, not that I don't like pop but you know uh, body problems got to got to stay healthy for various reasons right but so you know I don't really drink pop you know almost ever but imagine you go to a vending machine or you get like a pop at a store or 
I guess like a Sprite or a 7-Up is very fizzy, you know what I mean? And you open up the pop or the Dr. Pepper, whatever it is, and it's like, that's what I get. So basically, you go to like a vending machine, you're like, oh, what pop am I going to get today? I'm going to get Dolce & Gabbana the one. You get Dolce & Gabbana the one. I got a water bottle here. Whatever, but you imagine can. Pop open the can of that Dolce & Gabbana the one, and it's like, maybe you shook it up. Very fizzy. Very kind of sparkling, you know what I mean? Like, my nose was not prepared for this. Like, I thought maybe at the beginning, reading some reviews, I'd be like, oh, it's going to smell like Dolce & Gabbana the one, but the opening is spicy or like, you know, and I use this loosely like Middle Eastern, right? You know what I mean? But no, it was like opening a can of pop or something like that. Or a, I guess since it's a royal night, let's say it's like champagne or whatever, whatever, some kind of wine, whatever can be slightly carbonated with like bubbles or some bullshit. So it's like Dolce & Gabbana, the one with bubbles. And that lasts for maybe like an hour or two, just very fizzy. You opened up a can of Dolce & Gabbana, the one. And then it settles down, like I said, maybe an hour, maybe two hours top or something. And then you just get Dolce & Gabbana, the one, but like a different take on it. Dolce & Gabbana, the one made with different ingredients. Maybe a little bit slightly darker on the gradient scale or whatever it is you know what i mean maybe the sandalwood is a little bit stronger but it's still a great smell you know what i mean i i enjoyed it i wasn't uh not super horny about the opening because uh, i will say because the opening was so different i will say again i don't want to really test this with any girls but this is definitely a fragrance I'd be like, what, what is the point of testing this with a girl? Because the opening is completely different than the dry down to me. And kind of like when I said, like, uh, there's no, there's not like a big point of me ever trying, say, 1 million lucky with girls. I mean, I guess I could just for something to do. But the opening of 1 million lucky is so different compared to the dry down. It's like it, they're two completely different fragrances, in my opinion. So, um again is it more sophisticated or anything like that i don't think it smelled any more niche or i didn't think it smelled middle eastern or anything like that it just smelled like a different version of dolce and gabbana the one i'm sure you could have uh, just made with different ingredients again maybe a bit darker on the gradient scale a little bit more sandalwood but still different ingredients creating basically more or less the same smell so i liked it would i buy it um not with my disposable income, considering that I have multiple bottles of the EDT. I have a EDP bottle, you know what I mean? Um, so I can't justify it. I mean, had it come out earlier, maybe I would have gotten a decant. Um, but I already have so much of it, you know what I mean? It's hard to justify, but it is a good smell. Um, you know what I mean? But if I had a higher disposable in income, maybe I'd get a decant of it. But as it is, I can't justify it because I already have so much of it. But I do think it smells interesting, right? Anyway, that's my review on it. Oh, yeah, uh, performance was uh, kind of like Dolce & Gabbana, the one for me, you know, uh, generally. It's a, it's a, I don't have big performance issues with it. It's just, really just like a skin scent for me, which I guess is a performance issue. But longevity-wise, I've never had a big issue with it. You know what I mean? So anyway, uh, if you like the smell, it's worth checking out. Um... That's my review on Dolce & Gabbana, the one royal knight.